Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are on the planet. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Monday, the 23rd of May, Bull versus Bear webinar. Steve Miley here on the call for Trade Day. So welcome, everyone. We're going to go through our usual regular run through in here today with a slight difference on Mondays. So we tend to look at the calendar. We've had what we've got coming up. We'll take a look at the articles um, from the major news wires and what's going on on the macroeconomic, the fundamental, the geopolitical side of the markets, what's driving markets right here, right now. And then we'll take a look at the charts, what's going on, what's interesting on the charts, where can we potentially profit today. But uh, Mondays, we also then take a look at what I like to call the shape of the week to give us an idea of what we've got coming up in the week. Um, even as a day trader, um, you obviously uh, trade day is a day trade. Um, evaluation. But even as a day trade, it's good to know it's today likely to be more or less volatile. Now, at the moment, <coughs> regardless if we have data or events, markets are very, 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 very volatile anyway. It doesn't mean that it's not good practice to do this. I've been in the markets 30 years. I've pretty much been doing it for 30 years, looking at what's coming up for the whole week ahead. Give me an idea of the shape of the week. So I'm going to run through. Um, this is downloadable. This is on the um, um, in the um, trading room area on the members site. So you can go and take a look at this. Um, it's in the uh, research reports. So along with the te daily technical analysis reports um, at the weekend, usually on Sunday, I upload this report in here, which is basically just looking back over the last week, um, looking forward to the week coming um, on, on the um, geopolitical, macroeconomic and fundamental event basis. So what were the drivers last week? Well, we nearly hit a bear market on the S&P. We'll talk about that in a second. But what was the driver lower? Well, really, the driver lower came from Wednesday. The market was trying to recover um, in the early part of last week. And the big um, sell off that we saw on Wednesday um, was driven by um, target numbers, um, but also we had numbers last week from Walmart, from Lowe's, from Home Depot. US retail uh, retailers um, posting poor results or poor guidance, reflecting a weakened US consumer, um, concerns about recession, sending US equity markets tanking lower and pulling European Asian markets lower with them as well in here. So that was the big driver last week, um, particularly from Wednesday when we had those target numbers. Um, so this stoke fears a large slowdown and future recession. And then that is on top of um, US and global inflation worries and more hawkish central banks. So we've got real concerns around both inflation and potential recession in the future, which equals what we call stagflation. It's stagnation plus inflation, stagflation. We haven't really seen stagflation. We haven't seen inflation like this and um, since you know the last century. We haven't seen stagflation, which is low growth or a recession um, and inflation since really the 1970s, um, so maybe going into the 1980s. Um, and then also last week, we had various Fed speakers, which included um, Chairman Jerome Powell, and they've continued to send more hawkish signals um, to highlight their concerns around inflation and potential future recession. So that's what the drivers, what actually happened in the market? Well, on Friday, the S&P um suffered um uh, so it says its largest daily loss was on wednesday after those target numbers since june 2020 so it's the biggest down day for the s p since june 2020 um, and on friday the the s p 500 benchmark index at one point entered uh, a bear market territory now bear mar a bear market is considered when the market moves 20 percent from its high and the high was posted in january the record high um, and on what, at one point on Friday, the Nasdaq's already gone more than 20 percent down from its high. Um, but the S&P 500 hadn't done that up until last week. And then last week on Friday, it was down around 21 and a bit percent off the high at one point. Um, but we had this really strong. This comes in my next point here. So it was, it was down 20 percent at one point, but it closed um, down less than 20. It hasn't actually closed 20% off the record high um, because on Friday we saw this late session intraday rebound. It was literally in the last, it wasn't even the last hour of trading. It was like the last 50 minutes of trading. The market surged back higher. US equity markets had a really strong close, having looked very negative for most of the session, had a very, very strong close um, and avoided a more bearish signal, a more, avoided the S&P closing down that 20%. And actually, European UK indices and even to some extent Asian indices are still continuing to outperform their US counterparts. The dollar has reversed lower last week and continues to lose ground today. 
um, and U.S. yields have moved high, um, um, and have broke even lower. OK, from their um, high yield positions that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Remember, U.S. 10 year broke three percent a few weeks ago. Since then, um, it has retraced back to lower yields. So we've got yields going back lower. That's bonds are getting bid, though. Bonds are being bought as safe haven. Right. Um, so that pushes yields down. But that's also managed to see the, the, um, the dollar, the dollar, which has been very strong for all of this risk off moves that we're seeing. Risk off is traders, investors taking risk off the table. OK, so taking less risk, so selling risky assets, selling equities. And during all this, the the strong currency has been the US dollar. It's been the go to currency. Even more so than what is normally the, the go-to currency, the Japanese yen, the dollar's rallied even against the yen. That's because the FOMC, the Fed, have been more hawkish than the Bank of Japan are not even showing any signs of hawkishness. So higher interest rates are attractive to own dollars as well. So we're seeing the dollar has been king over the last one, two, three months in here, surging higher. OK, and actually I've got a chart down here on that. So look, here's the dollar. Look. The dollar has been surging, 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 surging. This is a weekly chart. Boom, 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 boom. And it's actually been rallying all of pretty much uh, this year. OK, um, the dollar has been rallying. But you can see yesterday, a sig uh, sorry, not yesterday, last week, a significant sell off in the dollar indicating a potential top. And even though um, a bear market was just avoided, look, we did get this rebound in here. So market, and we're going to take a look at the chart shortly in here. But going back to um, going back to this, so that's what's happened. Um, what we got coming up on this week? Well, obviously Ukraine stays in focus, but far less of a focus for markets right now. Central bank side, we do get um, Bank of England Governor Bailey speaking today. Um, Reserve Bank in New Zealand probably not going to affect any markets. You guys are trading. The real focus from the central banks this week is we get the Fed meeting minutes on Wednesday. Now I don't. I don't think these are going to be particularly a big deal because there's been so much transparency, so much talked to, um, talked about um, from the various Fed speakers over the past uh, week or so since the Fed, the last Fed meeting. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of new information coming through from the Fed meeting. We might do. I'm not saying that we won't. But I think it's probably unlikely to be a big event. OK, so because we've had a lot of transparency um, um, of late from the Fed. And what data do we have this week? Well, we've had the German IFO survey already today. We spoke about Bank of England governor speaking later today. Um, I'll come back to the German IFO um, survey shortly. Um, one of the big data point sets of data for the week is going to be from uh, now. It used to be market now, market S&P, flash PMI, PMI purchasing managers index. We get this for, for all the, for the major global economies. These, um, these are the preliminary numbers for May, OK? Final numbers will come out right at the beginning of June. But the preliminary numbers, which get, I think, about 80 to 90 percent of the surveys that the um, S&P slash market get, um, I get released. Now, obviously, in the US, usually the ISM data is seen as more important. But the ISM don't give this heads up data. They don't give this flash data. This this preemptive data. So when we get the the final data from S and P market, we'll get that at the beginning of June. We also get the ISM data, but the ISM ISM don't publish their PMI. They don't get publish flash data. So we do get US um, flash data. So we're going to be worth, certainly watching out for that tomorrow. Plus all the rest of the global flash PMI data tomorrow. We got the RBNZ interest rate decision on Wednesday. German GDP. Um, and U.S. durable goods. That could be important, watching out for that. And then obviously those Fed minutes on Wednesday. U.S. GDP. Now, is that important? Well, it's one of the biggest piece of data from an, from an economist standpoint. It does it usually affect markets from a trader standpoint. It usually doesn't. It usually comes in relatively in line with expectation. It's very backward looking data. So um, GDP data, once, you know, it's important data because it tells us whether we're in recession or not. It's, it tells us whether the economy is growing or not. But it's so backward looking. It's so lagging data that it rarely, usually everything gets priced in. You know, we get leader, better pieces of leading indicator data ahead of the GDP data. So very often GDP doesn't move markets. What can move markets, though, is PCE data. Now, for whatever reason, I don't I never quite understand why they split this PCE data across the two days, across Thursday, Friday. We get quarter on quarter, month on month, year on year, split across different days. Now, PCE is personal consumption expenditure data. Personal consumption expenditure data, the Fed tell us that is their preferred measure of inflation, the PCE price index data. OK, so we should be watching it. It doesn't tend to move markets. Considering the Fed tell us this is what they watch, it doesn't tend to move markets anywhere near like the CPI data does. But nevertheless, um, you know, because the Fed tell us we we'll watch it, we should be watching out for it. 
also Canadian retail sales on Thursday. So that's what we've got coming up. I did promise we'll go back to today for the IFO. So if you look at the German um, IFO data, so the IFO is a business climate index in here. Um, beat expectations, considerably beat expectations in here. A strong beat for German ISO. That's quite important in here. And that's helped elevate European stock indices. They were already higher this morning. It's helped elevate them even higher this morning. Let's take a look at also the other macros that we've had over the um, start of the day. Well, um, from five things to start your day. Now, if you haven't, um, you know, I've, I've told many of you this before, but if you go to Bloomberg's homepage, bloomberg.com forward slash markets, over here on the right, the most important market news of the day, you fill in your email address in here and you'll get this five things to start your day for your time zone. So whether you're in Asia, Europe or US, you'll get a different report. It will come into your inbox um, pretty much just before you get up in the morning, probably depending on when you get up in the morning, obviously. But it comes in early. For me, it comes in. Uh, the European edition comes in at like 6 a.m. usually. Um, and so you can sign up for that there. Um, five things to start your day. You can access it, obviously, on the site as well. It's free. A lot of the Abuba articles are not free, but this is free. So five things you need to start your day. So stocks are higher in Europe um, and, and U.S. futures are higher as well. And that's because. Um, over the weekend, Joe Biden, President Biden, said that tariffs imposed on China by the Trump administration were under consideration. OK, potentially um, the speculation they may be reversing those measures. So that's obviously a positive. Right. There, that was very much a negative of the Trump administration, the trade war with China. If we reverse some of those or there's speculation of reversing some of those um, tariffs that were put on China by the US and vice versa. OK, that, that was done on both sides. Um, that would obviously free up trade and that would be seen as a positive. So building on the intraday rebound that we saw on the um, U.S. equity indices, we've had a further rebound in here for European equity indices. And that's also been helped by if I just go and find it over here. So look, stop. Oh no, that's not that one there. Where are we? Hopefully on this year. European shares rise on upbeat German business morale, M&A cheer. So that is also the IFO. OK, so um, we've got the um, um, the IFO um, data that I just mentioned there, the German IFO data, better than expected. And also some um, so business morale, unexpected rises in May. And also Siemens Energy launches 4.3 billion bid for Siemens Games Gamasar, whatever that is. I don't even know what that is, to be quite honest. Um, a, tur a, a wind turbine, mate. Twin, so m a activity, mergers and acquisitions, m and um, that's seen as a positive for markets, right? So that's buoyed markets in Europe. It shows that um, players in the markets are, even though we're in kind of a, into a very negative territory for the year, for stocks in here, um, in US certainly, not so much in Europe. European stocks have not been hit uh, nearly as much, but the, the m a is still going on. The, the corporates are still um, active um, in mergers and acquisitions. Um, so, yeah, so that's positive in here. Um, what else we had? Um, da, ba, ba, ba. Uh, this is a little was a little bit of a worry. There. So we had the positive from um, from the uh, Biden re China, but also then there have been some new COVID cases in Beijing, and that's raised concerns of uh, new lockdowns having um, started to move away from lockdowns in here over the last week or so, um, potentially for new lockdowns um, coming in here. Um, and then not much else in here from five things to start your day. But it was the Biden uh, comments re uh, China that sent uh, stocks higher in here today. So look, stocks rise on buyer than tariff comments and the dollar drops even further. So moving away from the dollar. Why? Because the dollar seen as a safe haven. So why then you go to um, other currencies and what's done really well, look, Aussie Kiwi. So these are what we call the risk currencies, Canadian dollar as well. Aussie Kiwi, Canadian dollar all higher in here versus the US dollar this morning. Um, and why is that? Because those risk currencies, they seem to be a good place to go if you're in a risk on environment. And if we do go and take a look at the um, Australian New Zealand dollars, they're, they're doing really, really well. They're, they're uh, set, uh, multi week highs in here, or certainly for the last week or two in here. So here's, oh, here you go. Here's the Kiwi dollar in here. Look, it's a strong rally. And we have rebounds. So this is the, we're getting a turn in here. A significant turn in here um, on the risk currencies. The Australian dollar looks similar in here, pushing back higher and been doing that since the middle of May. OK, so the dollar has been weakening over the last week or so. OK, and we showed you that um, previously with the dollar index pushing back lower in here um, and risk currencies going higher. So 
the FX markets are telling us we're more in risk on mode. OK, Australian New Zealand dollars going higher, the US dollar weakening um, as a safe haven here. And so all of that says to me, you know, this are we about to see the turning point? Um, I've been talking about the potential turning point in here um, on, on the stock indices. If we look at the European indices, they're actually doing a lot better than the uh, US indices in here on the charts. So it, are the US indices about to turn? And it's going to be interesting to see and monitor that. And we'll take a look at the chart shortly. So where are we in here this morning on that? Actually, let's just take a look at a couple, another couple of articles before we look at this. Oh, I'll come to that one. We really looked at this one, I think. So European stocks higher with the MA and the IFO. Yeah, the IFO survey. And in here, Further news from Reuters, even when it loads. Stocks hover above bear territory. So that's the what we talked about um, previously. Um, stocks hovering above the 20% down on the S&P 500. Um, so uh, avoiding that in here. And again, European bourses less hit than Wall Street. You know, European averages are doing better than their um, uh, US counterparts. German IFO surprises in a positive way. And then another article in the morning bid, no capitulation yet. So even though we broke down through that 20% barrier back on Friday and rebounded back higher, it wasn't a complete capitulation, okay? Capitulation in financial argument first month when investors lose all hope. But we haven't seen that. You know, markets went lower and rebounded on Friday. Look, avoided closing 20% down from its January highs. Um, 18% you know, ended up down on Friday with a strong recovery that we saw um, in the literally in the last 50 minutes of trading. Um, and a couple of other articles before we go and look where we are right now. So US futures hold high ahead of North American trading. So here we are, S&P up 1.1, NASDAQ 1%, Dow up 1. Late recovery at the end of last week, final hour, um, still a rough week, but then looking, um, popping higher in here um, today. And Forex Live also highlighting, look, European FX news, dollar drops on risk. Loss. I mean, so again, dollar lower in here, dollar lower. Um, those risk currencies going higher um, as we've seen a move into um, more of a risk on environment. Let's just take a look at where we are going into today. So European bourses, the European exchange is significantly higher this morning. We're between um, three quarters and one percent, maybe one point oh, just over one percent in here on most of the major European indices. CAC is only the CAC French is only up 0.3, but uh, the German index, the DAX, up 0.8%. Um, FTSE is up uh, just over 1% in here. Spain up nearly three, just over three quarters percent. So um, stocks in here doing well so far in Europe. Um, rebounding with those Biden comments and rebounding after the late rebound in the US on Friday. Um, and then in here we see this morning, look, between 1.1, 1.2% higher. NASDAQ 1% higher in here this morning. So um, a rebound across the board. Quick nod to the CME Fed in here. So look, this is actually going higher in here. So less and less chance being priced into a 75 basis point. This is nailed on for a 50. And if we go in here to the next meeting, the 27th of July meeting, again, the receding chances now of a, an extra hike only expecting 250 basis point hikes which is pretty much what the fed have told us so the market not now not pricing in very much chance of a 75 basis point hike uh, over the next two meetings right chart time so look there's that really strong rebound in here now you could argue that this is either a hammer pattern or really it's more like a doji pattern and uh, dragonfly doji with the longer tail in here um, at the bottom um, and the market, you know, going down on Thursday, we got down to and held the previous low in May and then flash below that and back up again. You could argue this is still like a double bottom pattern forming, right? It's not a perfect double bottom because obviously the two lows are not at the same point. But we went down there, flashed and came back higher. If we take out that high now, remember, this is that was there's that Wednesday sell off. That's that target driven and all the uh, U.S. retailers that drove the market higher in here, plus some hawkish comments. Um, driving the market, rejecting this rebound that we saw um, through the early part of last week. And then the market flashed lower, back high. And look, and then this morning, we've already got back above Friday's high. Now we're back down, not as high as we were, but we did get back above Friday's high. And if we go and take a look at the NASDAQ, it's the same kind of thing in here. We get this kind of hammer pattern, more of a hammer pattern. 
on the Nasdaq. Hammer slash Dragonfly Joe. Doji rejecting the downside again. Potential double bottom. It's got to get back all the way up back up here. And look, not quite as positive on the Nasdaq. We did pop higher in here. Haven't gone and tried Friday's high. Friday's high, you know, at the moment, the Nasdaq, the overnight high and Friday's high. Let's step into the 15-minute chart. I'm going switching back to the S&P. So in here, you know, last week it was setting up, you know, when I spoke on Friday, we were looking this as a potential inverse head and shoulders, right? And we're drawing these necklines and then the market plunge lower and then look there's the acceleration that comes look so that comes literally in the last 45 minutes of trading in here uh, okay you get this surge higher and then higher overnight and then dip back lower into like kind of you almost get a little gap in here it wasn't a gap because we had plunged down lower this is also friday's activity but you kind of have an intraday gap the market dipped back down to look into the gap and actually rebounds back higher. It's rolled over the last 30 minutes in here or so. Nevertheless, for me, there's real risk in here that the bottom is slowly going in. Really, it needs to take out the, the overnight high. Remember, we've already been above Friday's high. Um, I wouldn't want to be going long this until we get above, above the Friday high. I probably wouldn't even want to play in this market until the US equity market opens. If it breaks down below this low, so you've got these lows in here and here, if it breaks down through these lows, then this could easily be back into here really quickly. I'm not being precious about being long here, guys. I'm not being precious about being bullish. If this takes out this support in here, you know, happy to be short. At the moment, though, my feelings are even through this peak in here, the more recent peak we've seen in the last 45 minutes, that's at 39.48 and a half, or the overnight peak, up at 39.55 and a half. Through either of those, I'll be happy being long. And it's the same thing on the NASDAQ and going to the 15 minutes. Now, NASDAQ not looking as positive in here. Again, I'm going to get rid of actually all this old. So again, you had this potential bottom going in. We spoke about on Thursday. And then you get this aggressive sell-off and then strong rebound. Big sell-off, big rebound on Friday. Leaves that kind of dragonfly doji pattern. Again, look, kind of intraday gap higher. The market dips down and holds back at the at the at where the lows from the day. Rebounds, but ro again, roll back lower. So again, in here, you've got three trigger points. The more recent high in here on the top side, uh, 11, 9, 7, 3 and a half. You've got the overnight high, um, 12,045, 75. And then you've got Friday's high up here which is at 1209675. I still, my view again, up to back, up for, up to and through Friday's high. If it takes out this low in here, then happy to be bearish. Okay, let's um, take a look at the commodity markets. Going to kick off in here with gold. Now gold obviously catching a bid because the dollar is weak. Let's go to a quick nod to the dollar in here, dollar index. Um, plunge lower in here. Remember, this is um, still uh, Friday's day and not actually... Um, open yet, I think. Why are we not getting? Why have I not? No, it is open. I'm not sure I've not got prints there, unless it's rolled months. Maybe we got onto the next month from the dollar index, but a big sell off completely the topping pattern. Took out these lows in here. We've been marking that low and um, took out that low back on Friday. So, um, dollar looks uh weak in here. Um, but if we go to take a look at gold, gold benefiting both Thursday and Friday last week, and again in here this morning from the dollar weakness, but taking out these highs in here now. And gold looks uh, really bullish in here for me. And I think you potentially got more to go going into today. And again, it's going to be somewhat um, um, watching stock indices, but you've got now this kind of strong uptrend in here for gold. It's going to extend that out. So you've got this strong uptrend and we've got um, another internal trend line here. Coming up through this low, through here. See, I probably wouldn't draw that. I'd probably draw that. Again, we spoke about this last week, drawing it off the secondary low. I'm going to get rid of this one. So rather than coming off this low in here, you know, which you would normally do up through here, it doesn't really work so well. You want to draw it up through here, and it kind of then cuts through. It's not the best trend line. I think we've got a better – oh, where's my thing gone? Oh, here we go. I think we've got a better internal trend line. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. There's the old trend line. Internal trend line comes off the second high. We spoke about this last week. Not off the first high low in here. Sorry, it comes off the second low. Coming off this low in here and then taking it through here. I think that's a better trend line, this one here. So whilst above this trend line here, this more accelerated one, happy to be buying gold, maybe waiting for the next break higher. Maybe you've got a little counter trend line. It's a 15-minute chart. Even back above the recent bar higher here, the 15-minute bar high, looks like a turning point here, back above um, 1861.8, um, certainly back above the high 
looks bullish again for gold. Uh, let's take a look at the um, oil market. Oil staying strong. Daily chart, first of all. Remember on the July contract now? So although we've been kind of in this kind of choppy range, it's been choppy and up and more up more recently. We had this uh, big dip lower and rebound Friday. For me, that would look like a topping pattern. I thought we were about to turn more negative. Now it looks more uh, bullish on gold um, and sorry, on oil. Um, but I think you can just about maintain shorts, I think, whilst below that peak there. But I'm not 100 percent convinced. So that peak there is 112.39. Um, and so I'm, I'm a little confused if I'm right and get oil in here. In my report, I've stayed bearish whilst below that impulse high there. There's your 112.39 level. Whilst below there, I think you can just because this has been a grind high. You had this, you had this negative statement back on Thursday, broke down in here, boom, boom, big sell-off, broke a load of support levels. We highlighted these with these horizontal lines and then recaptured in here back on back on Thursday. Friday was just a grind high, and then another grind high. Uh, I mean, I think I would probably venture a short whilst below that high there and a stop and reverse above the high. Above 112.39 bullish, whilst below 112.39, happy to venture a short in here um, and look for this to roll back lower. And if we go and take a look, we've got this kind of, again, like in, an internal trend line like running across here and then another one potentially running across here. That was meant to be drawn off of there. So down through these trend lines, wouldn't want to go short now, but if we break down through either this or this one here, happy to be short on um, oil. At the moment, just sitting and waiting how this play out. So I think this is this impulse point up here at 112.39 is important resistance. Whilst it's below there, I'd be erring for it to be short here. And obviously, if oil rolls low, low that could be positive for, for the um, equity markets as well. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up there, everyone. I'm going to wish you all a great trading day. Please do stay safe out there. I'm going to be back with you with another Bull versus Bear webinar on Tuesday.